So folks, we're doing a couple things in this one. One, we are going over a big flashing warning sign. And I know it's like we talk about this, but more and more people who used to work for Trump are coming out and saying that not only is the man going through shocking displays of dementia and cognitive decline, he's clearly not well, but he is an active danger. Like he's not just sick, he's sick and dangerous, right? And I'm not trying to, we're not demonizing him because of that illness, but we're just saying like Donald Trump is the, the imperfect mixture of evil and insanity that will cause a lot of harm to a lot of people. It already has, but will continue to do so if he takes power. And we see it happen when protesters sh uh, shut down his rally, right? I have footage of protesters shutting down his rally and it leads to direct physical confrontation as the rally gets shut down and Trump is furious. And because he's a fascist that doesn't respect the First Amendment and good old fashioned protest, which is an American value, or at least it should be, it leads to harm to innocent people. So watch this. First, his staff go over the theoretics of Trump damage, and then I show you a clip that is so disturbing, it's going to make you queasy, but it's the real Donald Trump for the world to see. And I beg you, I humbly ask for you to watch this all the way through, to hit the like and subscribe button, and share this with a loved one that needs to be reminded of how bad Trump is. Finally, a conversation about it, Nicole, happening to get as many of those people as possible together. I, I will confess to you that last summer I was really worried it wouldn't happen. It's why I went and wrote that book, Blowback, is to try to paint a picture of what a second term could look like. Because to me and others, it was very lucid and very scary what that could turn out to be. We have seen quite a few folks come forward since then. There are still more that could come forward uh, in real time, as recently as today. I've been chatting with folks to make sure that a very wide cohort of those officials come together to really unify those messages to warn the country. But it's not even just about Donald Trump, Nicole, as you know well. I mean, the, the man that I interacted with years ago was very visibly unwell, was observably unstable, and he was the president of the United United States then. I can only imagine what's happened to him since, and, and we've witnessed it. I mean, we all see it as an American public, but I can't imagine how unstable he'll be behind that resolute desk again. But even if, you know, Donald Trump wasn't going to be a problem, it is the people he's going to put in place. And there's three categories that scare me. And Nicole, I will call them the loyalists, the assassins, and the replacements. And just go down the tiers of government. At the cabinet level, he wants to put in loyalists. And his team says they don't care if the Senate confirms those people or not. They're going to put them in anyway, and they know the courts can't stop them. So people who will execute his orders no matter how bad. Steve Bannon says that next level, they're going to recruit, quote, a new generation of assassins to be those core political appointees to carry out Trump and Trump's team's actions. But then that lowest level, the civil servants they're going to nuke in a purge and put in replacements, that's what really worries me. These are the people who do things like project tornado paths and try to protect the United States from terrorists. Political appointees being in those roles is very scary to me. It's something they didn't do in the first term. They're keen on doing the second. And then there's a fourth category that I would call the shadow government. And those are people he doesn't even bring into government, but who he empowers. And we saw snippets of this in the first term where departments like the Department of Veterans Affairs, people over there said there was a group called the Three Amigos in Mar-a-Lago that would make phone calls and tell them what to do. These were not government employees. I worry that in a second term, you'll have all of these outsiders that can't be fit to take government jobs still pulling the strings. That Michael. is not how democracy is supposed to work. It was 11 months ago that Donald Trump became the first former U.S. president who had ever been indicted. And now, nearly a year later, he is the presumptive Republican nominee. He's just clinched the delegates. And it's not clear if voters are going to get to hear the evidence against him in any of those cases before they decide if he should return to the White House. Few people can speak to this better than someone who is his communications director. Anthony Scaramucci is here with me. And Anthony, it's great to have you. I just wonder if you look at the big picture impact of the conversations we just had with Ellie Honig and with Trump's former attorney, if none of this happens before the trial, what that means? Well, I think you've got to take that as the status quo. I think any of those other things that could happen before the trial, particularly the documents case, 
where if you really read through that complaint, that's where the most damning evidence is. Uh, if none of that happens, it's a Trump versus Biden rematch. And I think people have to get focused on that. And they've got to run the relay play, the replay of Donald Trump, what he said, what he did over the four years, uh, what he's saying now. He wants to go after you, Caitlin. Uh, he's made it very clear that anybody that he disagreed with or he has an adversarial relationship with in the press, he wants to potentially threaten their FCC license. He said publicly he wants to persecute using the Department of Justice, his political adversaries. Uh, and the list goes on and on. He's courting with dictators. He wants to be part of the axis of autocracy with people like Vladimir Putin. And just to remind people, Vladimir Putin is tied very closely to Iran now. So just think about what that means for the Middle East, because we know how transactional Donald Trump is. So I think we got to get off the cases. We have to focus on Mr. Trump being the most un-American presidential nominee in U.S. history. And we have to go through the things that he's saying he's going to do as it relates to being the American well, what president. About, and I think if we do that, he's going to lose the election. What about the human aspect of this? Because obviously there's also questions about not just what he would do in a second term, but who would work in that administration. And, and Brian Butler, the former Mar-a-Lago employee that we spoke with this week, he, he talked about the relationship aspect of this and what Trump does to those around him. This is what he told me. I must feel like you're choosing between you know, loyalty to these to your absolutely. friends and, and telling the truth. Uh, absolutely. And there, there's no person that wants loyalty more than the former president. I mean, he says it all the time. I mean, what do you make a, a, of what someone who worked for him for 20 years has to say about how he treats people and what that would mean if he takes office again? Well, I mean, what I would have asked, Brian, though, you've seen people come and go, myself included. There always seems to be a group of rubes that get sucked into Trump's orbit and think they're either going to be different this time or he's changed or he's, they're going to change him. Uh, and then he just rotates through those people and runs them over. And so that's why 39 of his cabinet members and sub cabinet members refused to endorse him at this time. But the, the one last point, Caitlin, I think this is the most telling point. I'm a little contrarian, and I believe that because he's such a name dropper, he will bring people in from the establishment. He'll want big names in the administration. And so you'll have a much of the same thing that took place in 2017, 18 and 19. He's not going to go full loyalist mm. because they're just not big enough names for somebody like Donald Trump. We'll see what that looks like. Anthony Scarabucci, I know you will not be one of them. Thank you so much for joining tonight. I, I don't I don't even want one extra day, Caitlin. OK, not even <laughs> one. Extra. I don't want to make it an even dozen. <laughs> Anthony Scaramucci, Mr. 11 Days, thank you for that. I got who is this? Is he a friend? You can get him out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. Go ahead. You can throw him out. that politics is getting serious. So now we know we're getting serious now. He's just a disturbed person. Remember that used to happen all the time. People used to call for it. Where is that? We want it back. But now probably we're we're really now into political season and that is happening. It's happening. And the people